How's it going guys? This is Brandon from USF1. Of course, we had the British Grand Prix today and after lap one, it sort of seemed um, in the bag for Lewis Hamilton. The race was delayed due to Julian Palmer having a hydraulic problem on the formation lap. He ended up having to go into the grass and all that. So the race was delayed. You know, it was a very disappointing day for Julian Palmer. He ended up, you know, of course, being his home Grand Prix. He wanted at least a decent result for the day, but you know, ended up not beating in the cards, and that's unfortunate for Julian that he ended up not even getting a, a chance. And then lap one, not, not turn one, which is oddly odd enough. There's usually always something going on in turn one. Uh, Carlos Sainz and Daniel Kvyat, the two teammates of Toro Rosso, ended up coming together, and Carlos Sainz ended up having, I think it was, uh, you know, major issues with this car, and ended up having to retire right away. And you know, that's just you know, unfortunate. I've, there is rumors. I think I don't know if it was confirmed or not, but I think it, I think it's been confirmed by a couple sources that Carlos Sainz might be, you know, be fired um, after this race. So I don't know if uh, that's going to be the problem. And they may, you, if you see a new name pop up going into Hungary, which is the next race in two weeks, might you might see Carlos Sainz dressing up for another team. Of course, you know, congratulations to vote to Hamilton again. You know, it was the uh, the race team in the bag from the beginning. And then, uh, you know, crazy, it was like, it almost seemed like a processional kind of race. I'm not saying it was like Sochi or anything like that, but it seemed like either the passes were just DRS related or, uh, well, near the end, you know, it was due to tire punctures of the Ferrari and Raikkonen. But, you know, Reckon ended up limping into the pits, and he ended up coming P3 anyway because ended up having to pit Verstappen, um, probably to prevent the same issue what the two Ferraris had. Uh, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, here's a picture of the shredded tires of, uh, you know, Kimi Reckonen and Sebastian Vettel. Vettel ended up being, like, literally the last lap of the race, or second to last, yeah, last lap, and then Reckonen was, like, second to last lap because uh, Vettel was actually up in P3, but he ended up, like, falling back. You know, it's just a disappointing day for the Ferraris. You have to admit that, you know, the Red Bulls ended up, like, they did look competitive today. And, well, both Ferraris looked superior to the Red Bull near the end, but overall, they ended up, you know, having issues at the, with their tires splitting. So, were the Red Bulls actually competitive? I think so. Well, like, they definitely were better than the field, because Ricardo came in P5, um, starting from P19. He just, um, you know, ended up not being as easy as he thought it was. But because uh, I think he had some floor damage, making overtaking a little bit harder throughout the race. But, you know, overall, th that car was superior and he ended up probably having like one of the best drives I've ever seen. Uh, beside, well, at least in the dry, unlike, you know, like, like Max says, the, the wet weather heroics. But yeah, great drive for Daniel Kvyat. He definitely has my vote for driver of the day. And, uh, you know, of course, Nico Hulkenberg, you also have to give him possibly a shout out for driver of the day, you know, considering he put that Renault. In P6, with uh, I think they had a new, you know, it worked out well for him coming in P6. Definitely giving Renault some much needed points. Uh, Vettel, you know, disappointing P7. He was looking pretty good in P3 until you know the the tire issue. Pretty decent showing for Force India with Ocon and Perez coming P8 and P9. Uh, normally it's usually Perez over Ocon, but this time Ocon got the best of Perez. Um, with that teammate battle that they have on. They didn't collide each, each, this time, and they ended up beating both hot, my Haas team. Um, and then Massa rounding out P10 for the last for the last point of the Grand Prix. Uh, you know, overall, the Williams didn't look very well, and this is their home Grand Prix as well. So they didn't, uh, they didn't, they only got one point out of, you know, two cars. Stroll didn't look solid at all. He came P16. Yeah, Williams had a disappointing day for sure. They looked, they seemed to be behind the pace in the last couple Grand Prix. And I'm sure they need to find something. They, they're they desperate for something going into Hungary. And uh, Van Dorn, you know, get, came in the P11. He almost got a point for, for McLaren. Alonso looked really well, too. Uh, but he ended up having to come out near, uh, you know, the very near the end of the race. Very unfortunate for him. So Alonso ended up, call, like, ended up coming in P18, theoretically. But, you know, he didn't finish the race. So he doesn't. It's not point it's not really matters it's sort of you know records and all that stuff madison and grosjean coming p12 and 13 i'm extremely and extremely sad that we didn't have the best results overall this weekend you know, this way the cookie crumbles you know kind of sucks uh grosjean you know i think he got tangled up with ericsson near like the middle of the race 
ended up having to like come out, but he didn't. He was trying to go for an overtake, and that corner is kind of hard to overtake on. So kind of happens. It's okay. Looks like our upgrades weren't as good as we thought they were, but maybe it was just because you know Silverstone's a, kind of a tough track. Uh, we we seem to be on form and pace and all that. So I think here's the uh, fastest lap times, and uh, you can tell that we had the two top tens. We had pace, maybe just not overall for the race pace, and we also Madison's claimed that he had some some damage to the floor and all that. So uh, maybe Grosjean had some some issues too with this car. Hopefully we bounce back for Hungary, and then of course the last of the grids being Ericsson, Kvyat, Stroll, and Verline being P14 to P17. You know, pretty processional order there. Uh, Kvyat, you know, ended up having to come into the pits uh, for that penalty with his issue with science, but, uh, you know, he came, he came out last and he ended up overtaking both Ver, uh, Verline and Stroll. So yeah, guys, cast your vote for driver of the day for the British Grand Prix. I would have to say mine would be Daniel Ricardo. I'm a little biased, but I just like a lot of overtakes and he sort of did like that last to first challenge that you try to do on video games and he sort of like looked pretty sweet. So yeah, again, uh, congratulations to Lewis Hamilton for the race win. He did draw a lot of criticism for not showing up to the London event a couple days ago. I'm personally am indifferent about it, but overall as a Liberty Media PR rep, uh, PR event, uh, having one of your best, uh, one, one of the faces of F1 not there is kind of uh, important. So yeah, on a PR side, it just doesn't, it's doesn't, it doesn't look good when only nine, 19 of your 20 drivers show up. But overall, it's indifferent. He's not contractually obligated to be there, and they knew about it. So it's really no no big deal. But he, especially since you get the race win, so congratulations, Lewis Hamilton, for a British Grand Prix. That pack, that place looked packed. Uh, it looked great to be at. It looked like a fun atmosphere. Maybe not for a non-Lewis Hamilton fan. I don't really know. Uh, I've never been to England or London or anything like that. So yeah, guys, uh, drop a comment below. Leave a like if you like this video and F1 in general. Um, you know, hit that subscribe button if you're new. I'm Brandon from USF1. Hope you guys have a good day. Peace.